Hi, this is Mickey Barfield here to talk to you about the tutorial for Pirates of a Shattered World. This is our character sheet here. Dice, of course, we got some miniatures, a little boat here, and our little GM screen here. So let's dive into the character, shall we? So we have Gunther, who race is a mutant, archetype pirate, and quality defensive, which means he's a little harder to be hit. We'll go into that in a minute. Attributes. We have Strength, Reflex, Charisma, Luck, Health, Willpower, Intelligence, and Aura. Now most of these, if you've ever played any kind of RPG before, you know what they are. A few that may remain mysterious to you would be Luck. Now to represent Luck here, we're going to use these little points here like some games use. I'm gonna, I won't mention their names, but sometimes they use tokens or things like that. But Luck helps us in a few different ways. We'll go over that in a second. Aura is basically your magical strength. That's helped to figure out your energy points and also used for magic, if your character uses magic at all. Now we have, for derived attributes, we have a damage bonus for him. He gets plus one die six. Heal rate is eight. That's what he gets per day without any kind of assistance and provided he's actually resting. Move, that's 12 yards per action. Languages. Now languages, we don't have it as a skill. We have them as a language fluency points. They range from one through four. One basically means you can say a few words. Two, you can speak it, but it's broken up. Three, you can speak it conversantly, but you have an accent. And four, you can pass for a native. Now Gunther here, he has common, wasteland gibberish at four, and thieves speak at four. Um, now hit points we have here. Now they go per levels. So we have 12 points for bruised, 12 points for injured, hurt, badly hurt, incapacitated, dead. So essentially for some reason he took say 13 hit points. He would be knocked off from bruised and down one point into injured. Hopefully you can catch on to that. Now obviously when you get to hurt, you suffer a minus one penalty to your actions. We'll cover that in skills in a second. Energy, this is basically your energy used for either magic or things that might drain you and type of things like that wear you down. Obviously it can make you sweaty, winded, fatigued, heavy fatigued, spent, and catatonic. Now, skills. Let's go over that here in a second. So you'll see they range in die type and multiples of die types. The D8, or D, I should say means dice, eight, six, and tens we go into. So what this means is, for our dice, if I have a character for education level, a D6 means he's barely educated. A D8 means he's fairly well educated, and D10 means he's very well educated. The dice represent how well educated you are. How many dice you have represents your proficiency. Now, in this case here, let's say Gunther has to make an athletics roll. He has one die eight, which means he's somewhat athletic. And a one means he tries not to do too much all the time. He is a bit lazy, we'll say. So what we do is we simply take the dice, in his case, one die eight, roll it. And in this case here, he rolled really crappy a one. And if I was a GM making him say, uh, make some sort of jump of some sort of uh, gap and hit it as reflex, his reflex is a four. So four plus one is a five. And let's say his target number was an average. Now average on here, you'll see is a seven, which means he missed it by two. Not too good, but then again, he did roll a one. Now let's say for example, he actually had three die eight, which means he does it all the time. So what he gets to do is he rolls three die eight. Now, so he has an eight, an eight, and a one. What he gets to do is when you have multiple dice, because you're more proficient, you get to pick the best of the one. Obviously, an eight is good. Now the good thing is, if he rolled double or more of the same number of the highest dice, or highest number on your dice, it's considered a critical. So in this case here, the highest you can get on D8 is an eight, and he rolled two of those. So it means he got a critical. So eight plus his reflex of four would be a 12. Obviously, if he was going for average, he well exceeded it, but I've had to get tough. So it's pretty good. So the GM can come up with some sort of 
special thing he may have gained in doing that. Okay, so obviously you can see in this case here, his best skill is ship handling and sword, three die 10. So it means he's very well educated in it and he uses it all the time. His worst one is a swim. Now, contrary to belief, not all sailors were good swimmers. Some couldn't swim at all. He can swim, just not great. So the latest, lowest um, dice he has in it is a D6, which means he doesn't really know it that well, and a one die six means he doesn't use that often. So he's a good dog paddler, that's about it. So in this case, if he had a swim, we'll use reflex again. So we got a four, plus a four is an eight. Not bad, if he had to get an average, he still got it, so he's lucky. Not great, but he's getting around. Okay, also in the characters we have, I'll flip the sheet, we have combat techniques. Now, unlike some games, if you have a sword skill and I have a sword skill, we're kind of all considered the same. But you can actually pick combat techniques based off of how good your skill is. So in his case, he has a D10, which allowed him three, let's see, three different techniques. So he got feint, defensive strike, and cleave. Sorry, I didn't fill in cleave. I was a bit lazy filling this out here. So feint, if he uses a feint maneuver, he gets a plus one to hit, and uh, the target, uh, plus one to hit target, he's a minus two to defend, may not use this multiple action, uh, multiple times in action. So if he was gonna try and do a feint maneuver on somebody, he gets a plus one to hit, they get a minus two to defend because basically he psychs them out. Now you, might have a different thing. You might have um, a parry slash, okay, which is a different thing. So basically each person can pick different techniques that allow them to have some sort of uh, differentiation between the other guy at the table there, or even a bad guy. Okay. Talents and complications. Now you have some for your archetype and you have some general ones as well too you can pick from. Now in this case here, he has Dirty Tricks, Secret Stash, and Guild Membership. That's what he has, which are pretty handy. Dirty Tricks allows him uh, to fight Dirty, which gives plus two to hit, and damage when he's using swords. So he's pretty good with his swords. He has a Secret Stash, if I remember right, it's like one die four items. He can say that he has stash somewhere that he's squirreled away within the Fractured Seas. If the GM allows it, they can use that and guild membership uh, pirate council. Now he does have a complication, which is a bad reputation, but we won't go into that. Now, since he's a mutant, he doesn't have spells, but he has mutations. He has two positive mutations. He has gills and clairvoyance. And his negative ones, he has photodependency and odor. So obviously being a pirate, he probably wants to work top deck and not below deck too often because of his photodependency. And odor, well, he's a smelly pirate but we'll go more into those uh, in the game, okay? Then we have equipment. For him, he has a cutlass, large knife, pipe pistol, and you can see the rest here, okay. So, that's the breakdown of the character. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do a quick little battle, okay? We'll say this here is Gunther, and this here is an Alaran mercenary. The Lawrence were actually the aliens who originally invaded and really helped uh, screw up the world. But because they actually look a bit elfish, the humans started to call them elves, much to the dismay of the Alarans. They actually detest that uh, name. As you can probably tell by now, the, tell by now, the Alarans are actually kind of the bad guys in this world. So yes, elves are bad. Hmm. All right, so we have Gunther here, who's on deck. And this Alaran here, who's pretty nasty, wants to come after him. There's a few other ones back here as well, here too. There probably should be more on this ship here, but this is a tutorial, so we're just gonna go into this fight right here. So what we do is we roll a D8 for initiative. So Gunther got a five. He adds it to his reflex of four, which gives him a nine. If he had any other talents or anything else that might give him bonuses, he can increase it, but he doesn't have that. So he has a nine base. Now, because this Alaran here is a no-name Alaran, 
we're going to only give him a d6. Now, if he was a named Lauren, some big bad guy, he would get a d8 for his um, initiative. He gets a d4. His reflexes uh, is a 4. They're pretty fast. It's a 4 plus 4 is an 8. Okay. So obviously, Gunther's going to go first. My plan favorites? Eh, maybe. Anyway, so Gunther goes first. So his movement, going back to here, is 12. He moves pretty darn fast. Now we're going to use each of these spaces here for movement. So he goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Obviously, well within range. So it goes up to him. He's going to try and attack him. Now that's a movement over half of his move. And because of that, he's going to suffer a slight penalty. Now to hit this alarm here, okay, yeah, we'll get a little closer. To hit this alarm here, he needs a base of 5 plus the alarm's reflex of a 9. I mean, a 9 and 4, which equals a 9. Now, because Gunther did move, and he's going to try and attack him, and it went over half his movement, he's going to add a plus 3 to that target number. So instead of 9, it's now a 12 or better to hit him. Pretty bad. But Gunther is a very, very skilled swordsman. He is quite deadly with a sword. He gets three dice. And because he has the talent, dirty trick, he gets plus two to hit. Uh -huh. Okay. And because he's feeling like a complete bastard here, he's going to use his combat technique of feint, which is a plus one. And the bad guy here suffers a minus two to his defend. Now, mind you, I can only do a feint once this action. That's it. So he's going to attack once with his cutlass we'll using a feint maneuver, okay? So we now have a plus three, plus my reflexes of four is a seven, okay? I'm gonna roll his dice, a three die 10. We have a three, three, and a seven. Obviously the seven's a winner. So seven plus four is 11 plus the three for the talents and the uh, maneuver is three. So it's going to have 14. Now, as we discussed before, the uh, Alarin's target number to be hit was a five base plus reflex of four. This is four, this is nine, plus uh, the penalty for him running to attack him plus three is 12. Obviously, he exceeded it. And that doesn't even count the penalty that um, Yelara and Merc suffered because of the feint maneuver. So he is obviously hit. Not good. Now if I want to, I can uh, roll in the optional hit table, which we're going to use because I like it. It's a little more detailed. So in this case here, we're going to roll percentile. I got a 38. Okay. And a 38 on our table here is a torso. So he just hits him right in the torso. Now a cutlass, in this case here, does a d10. And his damage bonus for Gunther is a d6. And because he's using dirty tricks, he gets plus two to his damage. And the cutlass also has a plus one. So a total of plus three. Okay, so I got a nine plus one plus three. That's a 12. Now this Alarin here, he has 24 hit points. So he did a pretty good damage to him. Now, the Alarin is wearing um, studded leather, which offers four points of protection. And we subtract that. Let's see, it's the 10 plus three is 13, minus four is nine. So he takes nine to his torso. Ow, it's gonna leave a good mark. Now, if I wanted to, I could do another multiple action, action but if I do that, it's gonna be a minus two to his next action. Can't use a feint maneuver because he's already done it once. So that just leaves him being a dirty fighter and his dirty tricks, which helps. But we get the basics of it, of how that's done. So hopefully this answers some questions. If you'd like to know more, just contact us, write us, whatever. And we we'll hope you like what you see and look forward to hearing from you.